So the next big idea I want to share with you is the importance of our brains making connections um, and those connections come about, uh, one really great way to have brain connections is by making maths visual. Turns out that every time we work on a maths problem there are five different brain pathways involved and two of them are visual pathways. And in fact the main way of representing quantity is through visual pathways. So how does our brain make very important brain connections? It happens in maths when we see maths in different ways. When we see maths as numbers, pictures, words, graphs, tables, algorithms, and we connect between them, then in really important brain connections are happening. So at Ucubed, we're really working hard to make all maths visual. And we are taking what some people think is very procedural mathematics and showing how it can be beautiful and creative and visual. So I wanted to show you a couple of examples. This is one. This is the uh, multiplication table, the 12 by 12 table. For many students, this is an instrument of torture. They are made to memorize, uh, which is very damaging, just blindly memorize math facts when actually you can give students this table and ask them, what do you notice, what do you see? And they will, there are many really interesting and cool patterns in this table. Now, whenever I give it out to large rooms of people and I ask them, what do you see? They see patterns going down, they see patterns going across. Recently, we noticed this pattern. Um, and we thought, how interesting, how cool is that? Look at those curves that show multiples on the multiplication table. And we love at Ucubed to have tasks that we call, we say they're low floor and high ceiling. Anybody can access them and see things, but they go to really high levels. And this is a perfect example of that. I actually posted it on Twitter and said, look at these curves. And in a short space of time, students were playing with it and presenting it to other parents. And then all these mathematicians jumped in and started playing with it. And one of them is a mathematician in Edinburgh who said, oh, I, I just got really inspired and took it further. And look what he did with that uh, table. So this is a perfect example of how we can make maths more interesting, visual, creative, low floor, high ceiling. In our new books, we've taken every topic, um, as I said, that's kind of dryly presented and tried to make it visual and creative. So this is one of our fraction questions. Find the area of each color in the picture below and write each area as a fraction and write statements about which fractions are bigger using equivalents. There are many things about this task that we like. One is it's, it's beautiful, it comes from a piece of art. Um, doesn't have numbers, but it asks students about the size of the fractions. And you know, you can interpret this in different ways. You could see this yellow part of the fraction as being the this L shape, or you could imagine that it's actually a square behind this orange square. And so when we give it out, people have different ideas about it, which is wonderful, because then you can do something very mathematical, and you can talk about your assumptions, and then both answers are correct. Some people say, well, I'm assuming that this square is behind the orange square, and this gives me this set of results, and other people say, well, I assumed these were L shapes and that gives me this set of results and then you have a great conversation. Um, we also show fractions like this, again taking from artwork and like this um, to get even more complex and ask, picture, ask questions about fractions from this beautiful pieces of art. So making maths creative and visual is, makes it a whole different subject for students. I have taught maths for, very, very, for many years, I've observed maths classrooms, and I know that when maths is all about numbers, huge status differences come up between kids. Some kids are fast, some kids are not so fast, they all decide who's good and who's not good. When you make maths visual, it changes all of that. And all of the students um, are engaged and they're able to show how they see things, and it's really different. So there's lots of reasons to make, to have maths be visual in these ways. And interestingly, the National Geographic published an article recently called What Makes a Genius? 
And they're fascinated, people are fascinated by what makes these amazing performers. They have Einstein's brain actually cut up in slices in a museum. And lots of people have stared at it, they don't notice that it's any bigger or any different. So they've brought in a living, what they call geniuses, to look at how their brains work. And this is what they find. They find that they have more active brain connections, more communication going on between the different hemispheres in the brain, more flexibility in thinking. Um, and that's really important. Thank <music> you.